Hello! In this video we will see how we can create multiple stages and change them when we complete the quest. The logic we will use is to find the positions and enemies for each stage and then change the stage when the player complete the quest. So, this is how the game was at the last video. We have three kinds of enemies. And we can start and finish the quest at the NPC. But if we finish the quest, we just get a congratulations message. So let's change that. We will manage all the logic for the enemies by code, so let's start removing the enemies from the scene. We will define the positions to respawn the enemies, so we can add a node to D to organize these positions. Let's rename it to respawn points. And inside of this node we can create other two nodes to D to separate the positions that are at the ground from the positions that are at the air, because we have enemies at the ground and flying enemies. We can rename these nodes to ground and air. And now we start to add the positions. Let's name them as P1, P2, P3 and so on. Then we need to set the positions. I've tested some positions before, but you can drag them and get the positions you like. Then we define the positions for the flying enemies. Now let's open the main script. First, we can preload all our enemy scenes. Now we need to make some changes to our respawn function. First, we add the type so that the respawner can create the enemy in format as parameter. Then we can make a test to check which type was passed and create the correct enemy. So, if the type is 1, we will create the enemy 1, if it's 2, we create the enemy 2, and if it's 3, the enemy 3. We can add another parameter to inform if this is a new enemy, or if this is an enemy that's respawned after killed. This will be useful because we will use this function too to create enemies when a stage starts and we don't want to delay when the stage starts. So we can name this parameter as new and define that by default it will be false. So enemies that are killed don't need to inform this parameter to respawn with delay. Then we make a test to just call the delay if the enemy is not new. Now let's create a ready function so when the main scene starts we will create the enemies for the current level. So basically we will test if the current stage is 1, then create the enemies for the stage 1. If it's true, we create the enemies for the stage 2 and so on. But we need the current level to be persistent after the game is restarted. To do that we can create a variable inside the global script. So we start the current stage variable with value 0. Then we can reset the current stage variable when the game is restarted. Now we can create a new function to be used when the player passes to the next stage. This function needs to reset the killed enemies variable and reload the scene. Now we can go back to the main script and create a logic to respawn the enemies in each stage. So at stage 0, let's get all the children of the ground node. Then we loop through all the children's and respawn an enemy at each of the children's position. This enemy will be of type 1, that's the basic enemy. And we can pass through because this will be a new enemy. 
Now, for stage 1, let's copy this logic and make some chains. Let's create some flying enemies too. And here the logic will be basically the same. We will loop through the air positions and create the enemies. But these enemies will be of type 3, that's the flying one. And I forgot to add the globals in front of the current stage variables, so let's do that. Now we can create a logic for the stage 2, that will be our last stage. It will be similar to the last one. We can start copying these two lines because we will need to access the children's again. We can create a variable to be the index for our loop. Now the only difference is that I will make a test to check if the mod of the position of the loop and 2 is 0, so it will intercalate between the enemies 1 and 2. Then we increment the index. And we create the flying enemy the same way we did at stage 1. Now we can go back to Dialogic because we want the next level to be called when the player finishes the mission. So we can use Signal like we did at the start timeline. Here at the finish timeline, after the congratulations message, we can add a delay of 1 second. And then we emit a signal. We can pass the word next as parameter. Now we can go back to the NPC script. Then first we can add the connection to the signal when the finish timeline is called. And here at the dialog message function we manage the behavior when the parameter next is received. And in this case the current stage variable can be increased by 1. And we can call the next stage function. Now let's adjust the resp enemy functions because we added parameters to the function and we need to adjust it when we call it. So basically the second parameter is to inform the type of the enemy that will be created. And the third parameter is optional to determine if the enemy will respawn with delay or not. I will search in the files to check all times the function is used and so be sure if the parameters are correct. So as we can see just this one was not correct and is the one we are adjusting now. Before we run the project let's just fix a mistake I made at the main script if you haven't fixed it already. Here we need to test the index and not the object itself, so let's change the y to chpos. Now let's run the project. And so we can start the mission. Now let's kill 5 enemies. Let's go back. And now we pass to the next stage. And we can see we have new enemies. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if so please consider subscribe, share, give a thumbs up, leave a comment and thanks for watching, bye!